there's the first fish of the day. Lovely rainbow, quite a fresh stock here today by the shape of his fins. I've taken my fly out of him and he's already got a fly in him. I don't know what sort of a mess of a fly that is. But uh, seeing as it's the first one in a long time for me, I'll put this fish back. I'll get that fly out of him, obviously. Yeah, a bit of a damsel. So, let's get him released as a cracking start. Hello and welcome to another episode of Banded Fishing UK. In this episode, as you can see, I'm not sea fishing. But I've gone back to my roots and, and doing a bit of fly fishing. And the venue of choice is Clint Clover Dog, which is up in Mid Wales. And it's a rainbow water. There are brownies in here, a lot of wild brownies, a few stock brownies, but generally they're after stock rainbows. Although there are a lot of overwintered fish as well. Um, it's very cold starting off. So I'm going to start with the sinking line. I've got a die five on, which means it sinks at five inches per second. And I've got a pair of lures. I've got um, a 10 foot rod, seven to eight to eight, seven weight line, it's a 10 foot six rod. Because I'm a bit shorter, it just helps me keep the, the line higher on the back cast. So it's not getting stuck so much. I've got a, a 10 pound, 10 foot leader. My top, I've got two flies, like I said, I've got my top dropper is an old-fashioned tequila blob, which is about three foot away from my braided loop. And then at the end of the leader, I've got a small cat's whisker booby. Just dyed a bit green, but just worked a treat anyway on my first fish. First few casts, I've had a fish on that. I left that sink for about 10 seconds before strip retrieve, and I had a, a real nice pull. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start off on lures. As it is a bit cold and the fish might be a bit deep but through the day I'm hoping the fish will come up in the water a bit and I'll be able to use a few different methods and maybe even get onto a floating line let's catch a couple more That's fish number three in a very short time. So the pulling tactics, the lure pulling tactics are working. This has just come to the blob. So I've had two on a tequila blob and one on a cat's whisker booby. I'm just doing a, I'm leaving a sink for 10 seconds or so, steady strip, and but that one took right under my feet. Just about to lift the flies off when he took it. Let's get that one back. Yeah, it doesn't hook the fish. It's probably so hard. I'm sticking with the strip retrieve for now. So I'm leaving it sink a touch. Strip, strip, strip. And then I'm pausing, just playing about, just teasing the fish into taking. Let's try a retrieve now. So strip, 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 strip. Strip, strip, strip. Bit of a pause. Strip, pause. Just erratic to catch their attention. Strip, strip, strip. My 
never in a rush to pick the flies off the water. The fish here are known to follow you right to the bank. Take it. Take it in the last minute. It's always worth just leaving it. Hang, we call it the hang. It's effectively a pause just before you pick it off. Leave it go down the touch again. Soft rod soaking the fish to fight up. I, I do play rainbows quite hard because if I'm planning on putting them back, I don't want to. I don't want to tire them out. I want to give them the best chance of surviving. There we go. Again, another fish for the tequila blob with a grass on it. <laughs> well, that's a lot better condition. Look, it's almost fin perfect, that one. That's a gorgeous fish. Still getting back. Of course, uh, there are other retrieves as well, other types of retrieve. We got the strip now. I'll carry on with this strip. Start again. Catching the bottom there. It's relatively shallow here. Okay, let's get it back out. So I'll leave that sink. The next retrieve I'll try for a little bit is a roly poly, which is a the flies will move at a constant, faster pace. And the roly poly works well with a pause. So very, very fast, stop. And it's right in the fish's face, and that's when you seem to take it. So I've left that go down the touch. And all I do is, I'm doing a double strip. I tuck the rod under my right arm, and I'll strip with both hands. And then it looks like you're doing a roly poly. Let's try. Stop. 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 Coming to the end. Stop. And repeat. Keep it going. Well, the roly poly isn't working. So, back to the strip retreat.
Oh, it feels like a better one. Oh, yeah. Better fight, anyway. Another one for the cat booby. So it's gone a little bit quiet, which is as expected. You get a bit of angling pressure, a few fish have got caught. I don't know, 14, 15 fish along this bank. So they are gonna shy away, but they will come back. Uh, but what I do, if it's really quiet, I'll either change a fly, which I'm going to anyway. I'm gonna take off the cat's whisker and put one of these lovely candy floss boobies that my father's just given me a, a couple of. Try that, should change it up. But also, give the fish a break. I'll have a cup of coffee, I have five or ten minutes break. Freshen the water up a bit. If you just keep thrashing it to a foam, the fish are not going to come back in, are they? They don't like noise. Trout are quite a wary fish. So I'll just put that on with a five turn. Tuck blood knot. Half tuck blood knot. Just wet it down. Um, yeah, so just give them a break. Enjoy the views. And if you start to see other people catching, Get your flies back out there. There we are. I had a fish on both flies then. The one spat it out. I could see him taking it. Both my flies. The chunky little fish. We are. Yeah, I can see those fish right to the end. My braided loop is out of the water. The the top drop that you took the bottom, the top drop was taken, he spat it out luckily. I think it would have smashed me up otherwise. Okay, now it's about half ten in the morning. It's finally warmed up a touch. And the fish seem to have moved up in the water. Now the last fish I had, and the one that also took my other fly, were just under the surface. So I changed to a fast glass, intermediate. This will still sink. Uh, it'll sink more like an inch and a half, so, uh, you know, it's a much slower sinking line. The fish seem to cruise just a couple of feet under the surface around here. So that's going to be my my approach, I got the same leader, still a 10 foot G3, it's the Fishtech G3 leader. 10 foot, 10 pound, exactly the same line actually. I've taken it off my sinker and put it onto this. I'm keeping with the, the candy floss booby, an orange blob or tequila blob. Let's see if that works. The wind is right in my face now, which is gonna make it a little bit tougher to cast. With the weight of the line, it should punch in all right, punch into the wind. You don't have to cast miles up here. As long as you can cast 10 to 15 yards, you'll be on the fish. It's a great place for kids to to learn. Brilliant. 
There we go. I can just about see that sink in. Let's get a cast of that. Sink a touch. The intermediate or fast class line, fast intermediate, is a very versatile line. And it's, uh, it's, it's popular up this reservoir because you can get so many different approaches with one line just by changing your flies. You can use neutral flies, neutrally, sort of, there's no added weight or added flotation to the fly, such as wets or nymphs, and that'll stay a pretty straight line. You can use a buoyant fly on the point like I am now, such as a booby, so then you'll get more of an angle from the surface down and then if you use a gold head on the point it'll angle downwards it's a different you can cover different depths and just you can fish different methods you won't go far wrong using the fast glass for most approaches here just give it a try there we are first proper cast with it then we've got a fish Let's come to the blob on the top dropper. Whoa, that's a good fish. Whoa. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Whoa. The hook was right in the scissors. Quite hard to get out. Still lively now. There we go. Fast glass works straight away. The old man is catching a few fish now as well. I think we'll pay him a visit shortly. Was a fish. There he is, he just jumped. <laughs> oh, he's pinched my leader. Ten pound line. Oh, devastating. I, I hate leaving tackling the fish. That's a ten pound leader. He snapped me the top dropper. 
There we are, there's a lesson, never go light. That's, I can't believe 10 pounds snapped. There we are. Hopeless. I'm just going to make a new leader with some of this uh, 10 pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to get off around 10 foot, 10, 11 foot, which for me is about two arm lengths. Obviously, it'll be just over that. So I've got two arm lengths. I'll, I'll snip that away. Don't bite the line. I've always had a bad habit of doing that. Just snip, get a little scissors or snips. Put that back. back. Okay, at the start of every fly leader, you want a loop to go onto your braided loop. So I know it's a bit bright. What I do is I double the line over to make a loop. Get a little bit longer. So there's my two, there's my loop. I'm going to make a loop out of that. Yes, you can see the first loop and I've made another loop. And all I do is put the first loop through the second loop four times. And that will create my loop. So it's once, twice, three times, four times. And that's what you'll end up with. Just wet it and pull it tight. Make sure it's coming in nice and smooth. And there's your knot. So snip away the tag. Again, don't go too close to the knot. Just leave a few mil. It's about two mil there. Keep your tag ends in your bag or your box, whatever you've got. That now will go onto my braided loop. Here's my braided loop. I'll put the braided loop through that loop. So that's sliding on my fly line. And then I'll pull the rest of the leader through the braided loop. See that's gone through there. I will pull all my leaders through there. And that's a loop to loop connection. Pull it tight. That's nice and neat there. Okay. And then I'll come down roughly three foot. So I'm three foot away from my braided loop. I find my snips in the grass. I'm just going to snip it so that I've cut that leader now. It's now two separate parts. So that's going to become my dropper and this is going to be down to the main, to the point fly. So I'll get my dropper length. So I've overlapped those by a foot or so. And then I'll come to the top, the top of that loose tag end there. And it's the same knot I've just tied that loop with. So I'll create a loop. So I've created a loop there with the two lines held together there. I'll just go in that loop four times again. So make the loop. Once. Twice. It's easier to do it without showing you. I'm trying not to uh, to block your view. You can tell you I'm really fast when you you know when I'm not on camera. But you'll get faster as well with a bit of practice. So there's the knot, that's going to be my dropper. Again, wet it. Pull tight. Make sure it's going down nice and smoothly and equally. That's, see, there's a slight loop there. There we go. And now I'll pull that up tight. And that's my knot. It's important the dropper faces the point fly because that's the strongest way you can do it. If it faces the other way, you'll snap off droppers for fun on takes. I'll just snip that top away. So there's my my dropper. I'll put a fly on there now. I'll go for a, another orange blob because it's working. Or tequila blob. That can go on the top dropper. Which is about 8 inches, 9 inches long now. By the time I've trimmed it up. I'll just tie that on. You'll see loads of videos online about knots. So I won't bore you with that knot. With hook knots, I mean, because it's an everyday thing. That's a five turn half tuck flood. Now I'll go to the point. I'll get the other candy floss booby. I like to, to keep quite a distance between my flies. I know a lot of people would go halfway down the leader and put their dropper there. Or maybe even put three flies on your trace, on your on your leader. But with me, I like to keep my two flies as far away from each other as possible. 
because the reason I think that is fish are going to see two flies close together otherwise acting exactly the same which is totally it's like nothing you'll ever see in nature is it so at least if they spread out if they're seven foot eight foot apart they might only see the one fly and then that's independent so let's get them back up there I'm gonna try this fly on the on the point now. Nice big flashy blue with a big black wing. Focal point in that eye. Ah, oh, it's great having a father who loves tying flies. <laughs> Let's give that a crack. On. First cast on it, and he's taking that point play. First cast. I can see the hook on it, the outside of his mouth as well, which is good. So I want to put most of my fish back today. Whoa! <laughs> hey! Come on! In here. In here. There we are. Magic. Magic fun. Again, a really chunky fish. Oh, let's see if we can get the fly out of the net. There we go. That fly was looking all nice and pretty before I cast it. Look at the state of it now. For another pristine rainbow. Nice take, nice fight. I'll get this one back as well. Oh, so the, the lure fishing was a big success. I've had fish on the sinking line and the intermediate. All types of, of lures I've tried have worked. It's been a good bit of fun. Some nice fights, some nice takes, but the fish are starting to get a bit more sort of suspicious, a bit more finicky now. There are less getting caught, which always happens every time I come up here. So I'm changing approach now. I've gone to a floating line and a fish pimp, or some people call it the bung. Uh, some people say it is it's float fishing with flies, because it is, I agree float fishing with flies you can't fault it but I've got a, a 10 foot leader below that that's trapped on my uh, oh it's tips and coffee I mean that's trapped on my braided loop 10 foot 10 pound leader again with three flies the bottom fly being a blob tequila blob which is which is what I've used today as a dropper fly and then just up from that I've equally spaced the three flies I've got a, a small cormorant on a b175 cameras in with a green, like a sparse green Fritz body, and a couple of red hot spots, and then the fly closest to the surface is a black and red buzzer. If I can just untangle that to show you, bit of red holographic there for it, you know, some flash, a bit more attraction for the fish. And the technique for this is to cast upwind. So I'll be casting to my right. Try to get that turnover so you know there's no tangles because these casts can last quite a few minutes maybe five or six minutes a cast so you've got to make sure your flies are presented well every time as long as you can see them flick over and you see three little splashes you know you're good indication wise obviously you've got the fish pimp sometimes you'll tremble most of the time you'll just fly away strike and fish on sometimes the takes are ferocious and before you can react the fish is pulling line out your hand so it's a little bit more of a natural approach, slower way of fishing, more relaxed, which is great. And I'm going to give it a go, see if I can get a couple more.
fish on. Taking the comber and putting the middle dropper. Lovely. It's a nice fish again. Every fish we've had have been in fantastic condition. Lovely fins on them. Nice strong tails. The boys up here really look after the fish. They always have. It's, fant it's a fantastic fishery. Fish number 16 for me now. 16 fish. Fishing really well. Just trying to show you which, which fly they all, all take in. Since I've changed to the bung, all the fish are taking the same fly. It's that little cormorant fly. You just make him out there. Tangle up in the net, they'll sort that out now. But I don't know if it's the depth this fished at. It's about four and a half to five foot from the surface. Or if it's the fly itself, but I, I want uh, I want to change the team of flies because they can't be that they can't be a team. So you might find the blob on the point is uh, is bringing the fish in, and then they are taking the cormorant. So while it's working, I'll leave that alone. Oh, there's a mess up. Let's sort that tangle out. Gavin's into a fish here. It stripped him down to his back in pretty much. Had a, a real good fight on this one. Been on for a little while now, so it might be a bit of a, a bigger fish. You got seven pound tip it on, so you gotta you gotta be careful. I got uh, done on ten pound earlier. So I'm just straighten that camera up a touch. There we go. Come in now. Slowly. We had so many fish, it's incredible. Give us some line, don't, don't uh, hold him back. Nice and easy. Let's get a little bit closer. We have to go and net this for him now. What's it on? Booby on a sinker, is it? Candy floss booby, is it? His favourite at the minute. Size 10 candy floss booby. That looks like a good fish. Wow. Good, take your time now. Take your time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time, yeah. Come on, fish. There's no point rushing it. Now, only now you can see a shooting head. Just coming towards the rod tip, so he's still a fair way out that fish. Is it big? <laughs> nice and easy. Make, if he wants to run, leave him run.
Det er samme nede. Looks like it's a big fish. Oh, she's doing it there? Yeah, it's a big fish. Yeah, I was taking the booby yet. He's a big fish. I made a fuss of him. Made a performance. Oh, no, he's a, he's a good fish. Yeah, nice fish. Fit fish. Bad, isn't he? That is a really good fish. Oh, he's a lump. Look at the tail on it. It's a lovely fish. This is a cracking rainbow. My father Gavin's just had on a candy floss booby. On a on a sinker, isn't it, Dad? Or uh, day three. Day three. It's gone and a little bit quiet, so he's changed about with the tactics. The booby, Big old tail on him. Massive. He absolutely unbelievably power. The booby was tied in a size ten. Partridge, heavyweight supreme, absolute fantastic fish. We check him back now. So, well done, Dad. There we are. Ah, oh, so we're getting towards the end of the session now. I've had 28 fish. My father's had 18. We're both trying to get to. Um, oh, let's pick this fish up. Both trying to get to 30 and 20, respectively. There we are, that's number 28. I'll just go and pop that back quickly. Just found a fly, someone's dropped. But uh, yeah, that comes to the end of the session. What a day, what a fantastic day. Obviously I'm not going to show you all the fish, because it gets a bit repetitive. You get the, you get the idea. I've caught on a, on a variety of methods. Started off on the, the deep, and uh, the deep lines, deep sinking lines, and the big lures this morning. And the fish gradually come up in the water, and they finished on the floating line with a bung. Still fishing eight to nine foot of depth with the flies that we're catching. Well, it's been a great day, great to get back up here. It is a bit of a different video, as I said. And uh, if you'd like to see more of the same, let us know in the comments. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next episode. And there she is, number 30. Best day I've ever had up here on the bank. Oof, away she goes.